Welcome Adobe Connect users. Today I'm going to show you how to use Adobe Connect as a host. The first thing you want to do is click on the link of your meeting, come to enter with your login and password, and enter using your username and your password. Once you do that, click enter room and you are ready to get started. Once you're in the meeting room, the first thing that you want to do is make sure that your room is set up correctly for your participants. If you would like your participants to be able to use the microphone, what you will have to do is come up here to audio, go to audio conference settings, and make sure that this is checked. Allow participants to use microphones. Once I do that, I see that my participants over here now have a little mic. If I want to turn that off, I can simply come and uncheck that. For myself, I want to make sure that my speaker is working correctly. So what you want to do is make sure that this speaker is green. If it's white, that means that it is inactive. Click it to make sure it's green and also make sure that your laptop or your desktop is actually unmuted. The next thing is to make sure that your microphone is working. It will usually be white when you first enter the room. You have to click it to turn it green. That means your microphone is active. Click it again to mute it. If you're having problems with your microphone, you can click the little arrow. You can adjust the microphone volume. You can also make sure the correct microphone is connected, especially if you're using a headset or anything like that. If you want to use the webcam, this is the webcam icon. If you want your participants to use the webcam, you're going to click on this little arrow and you have to check enable webcam for participants. Once you do that, your participants will be allowed to be on the webcam. For yourself, you're going to simply click it to make it green and then click start sharing or broadcast. Let me show you how that looks. The first thing I need to do is actually add a pod with the webcam so I can see it. What's a pod? These boxes are called pods. I have four pods right now, but I don't have a webcam pod. So I'm going to come here, check video, and now I have a webcam pod. I can actually make the pod in any shape I want to make it. I can move it around where I want it to be. So for example, if I wanted to decrease my chat box and put my video right here as a little square, I can do that. To start my webcam, I'm going to click it to make sure that it is green. Now, I'm not sharing my picture right now, so that's why you see that. But then I have to click Start Sharing. Once I click Start Sharing, now everyone can see my webcam. If I want to pause it because I need to exit or do something else, I can click pause and it's going to pause my picture right there. When I'm ready to start again, I click play. If I want to turn off my webcam, I simply click it to make sure that it's white and my webcam is now turned off. Next is to set your status. If you want to raise your hand, you can do that. And you also have other different statuses. The one that we will probably use the most is step away. And that's just to let people know that you have stepped away from the meeting. If you want to turn it all off, click it and now it is off. Now, let's look at the different pods. Again, I showed you how you can maneuver the pods. You can also maximize them to make them take up the whole screen or you can minimize or you can hide it. If I don't need this pod anymore, I can hide it and it goes away. Then I will make sure that this, which is giving me a couple of, a little problem, <laughs> will be restored. With your different pods, you have different pod options. As you can see, you have a bunch of different pods you can use, including a poll. If I add new poll, 
you see that now my participants will actually have a question to answer. If I open it, my participants will not be able to see it. And I love that if I click view, I can see who's answered and who has not answered. With your chat, you simply come down here to type what you want to to your entire class, hit enter, or you can hit the little send button. You can also change the size and the color of your text or your chat. Under meeting, you can control when your participants enter the room. If you come here to place participants on hold, they will get this message until you're ready to open the room. You can click OK. Then when you're ready, you can come back up here and click place participants on hold to uncheck it. Now all of your people will come back into the room. You can also record the meeting. If you record the meeting, you click OK, you'll see a little red bubble come up here that's telling you that it's being recorded. You can come back here, stop the recording, and now it's gone. With the different pods, you have the attendees pod. It shows you who's the host, and it shows you who is in your participant pool. If you hover over a participant, you see that you can start a private chat with them. If I start a private chat, you see that first I only had everyone, and now I have this private chat with Educator Alexander. I can send them a private message that the rest of the class cannot see. When I'm done with that chat, I can actually come here and just exit it out. If someone starts a private chat with you, you'll see this little golden box pop up and it's telling me that the participant just sent me a private chat. So if I click here, now I see that participant sent me a message and I can respond. Again, I can exit just that way. The Web Links 2 pod is an easy way that you can put links that you want your participants to go to. You simply click Pod Options, Add Link, name the link wherever you want to name it, put the actual URL, and then when your participants click on it and click Browse To, it will go to that web page. There's also a pod you may use that's called files. With this one, you can actually add a file that your participants can download. On the side of the screen, I'm going to make my screen a little bit smaller. On the side of the screen right here, you see that you have, this is your internet connectivity, and you have three different options. You can use the sharing screen, the discussion screen, or the collaboration layout. With the discussion layout, it looks like this. I usually use this if I'm having presenters, so their picture or their webcam can be a little bit bigger. You see that this one has discussion notes, so I can actually type out what the presenter is saying, and I have my box for my poll. Again, any of these that I don't want, I can hide, and then I can add others. And just manipulate them how I want to manipulate them. So it's really up to you what your room looks like. In the collaboration, now I have a whiteboard. So with the whiteboard, I can tell my participants or I can come here and use the whiteboard. The middle pod is called the sharing pod. If I click stop sharing, it's going to take away whatever I have on this screen. My participants now see a gray box right here. If I click the drop down menu and go to share document, 
That is how I can get documents in here. So I would click browse my computer and I'm going to pull in another document. You can only use PDFs, pictures, and PowerPoints. So I'm adding a picture at this time and it will come up for my participants. Now they are all seeing this flyer. If you, for yourself, you can use these and if you make your participants presenters, you can actually use the drawing tools. If you click draw again, they will all go away and you can use the pointer. Wherever you click your mouse, the pointer will follow. If I click stop sharing again, I can go ahead and add something else, such as a PowerPoint. So you would want to add these files before your class, because you don't want to take the time like I'm taking to actually have to upload everything. You want to add this ahead of time. So it's very easy for you to switch between your files. So once this is finished converting, we, it will pull up. You see that you have the two little arrows down here. This is how you can control your PowerPoint going from one slide to the other. And then if you click the sidebar, you can actually go to the slide that you actually need to show. Your participants do not see the sidebar. You see you have notes that you can put there as well. You can also share your screen. You would do that by hitting share my screen. Once you click that, you're going to have the option of sharing your desktop or sharing one of the applications. I usually just share my desktop and I share whatever I'm doing on my computer. Click share and you will be able to share your computer. This little box will not be shown to your participants. If you see, I can come here and I can still click on certain things to see what's going on. I can still see my attendees. Most importantly, I can still see my chat box and check it when I need to check it. The good thing about this little box is that you are not losing connectivity to the actual meeting because as you can see, now you're just looking at your screen and they're seeing whatever you do. So if you use this little box down here, you can still check the chat box, see if there's any questions, and still kind of manipulate your actual, um, your actual meeting. If somebody sends you something, you see that you can still see it just like you could when you were in the full meeting. Now I do want to give you a warning. When you do this, if you are on the webcam, your participants can still see you on the webcam. So do keep that in mind when you're sharing your screen. So if I wanted to show a video or anything like that, that's how I would do this. When I'm ready to stop sharing my screen, I can click stop sharing. And now I'm back to my Adobe meeting. To go between documents that I've already uploaded, I simply click on them. And then I click on another one. So that's why you can see that it's faster to upload all of your stuff ahead of time. And then all you have to do is go between them. So that's how you use this option. The next thing I want to show you is how to get participants in breakout groups. What you do is you come to this little middle section. And you see, usually it will give you three breakout groups. If you don't want three, you can simply click right here. And what you can do is you can either drag and drop your participants, or you can hover over them and put them in a certain breakout room, or you can just use shuffle. And what shuffle does is it shuffles them in different breakout groups. You can also use the plus sign to add more breakout rooms. And again, the little X's to delete them. Before you start breakouts, you want to pull up whatever document you want them to work on right here. And that way, once you start breakouts, they will all get their own 
version of that document. The good thing about breakout rooms is once you put them in small groups, they can only communicate with the people in their breakout room. So if I have three people right here, participant will only be able to talk and maneuver the screen with those three people. And then you can come back together and talk about what you did in the breakouts. When you're ready, you can hit start breakout. It will put them in breakout rooms. When they're in breakout rooms, you can come here to broadcast a message. That means you're sending the message to everyone. Let's say you forgot to give them a direction. You can come here, type in the direction, and hit send. It will pop up on all of their screens. Then when you're ready, you can end breakouts. Now we're all back together. I can come back to this and now I have all of my participants. When dealing with participants, you can do certain things by hovering over each one. I already told you about the private chat. You can also enable drawing, enable video. Most importantly, you can make them a presenter. If you make them a presenter, that means they can manipulate this screen. They can move it up or down, or if it's on a PowerPoint, they can use the controls down here to move your PowerPoint forward. Another thing you can do with each one, if the microphone is enabled for them, which I'm going to do just so I can show you, is you can mute their microphone. So if this person had the microphone enabled, I would come here and this last option right under make presenter would say mute microphone. So I can actually mute his or her microphone. I can also come up here to the pie options and mute everyone's microphone. I'm not seeing it right now because none of the microphones are active. But if they did have an active microphone, you would come right here and you would mute everyone's mic. Another thing you can do is remove a selected user. So if you have a user and their microphone is going crazy or their, let's say their um, computer is going crazy and you can't really continue with your meeting, you can come here, make sure they're highlighted, and you can remove them. So you can remove the selected user is going to kick them out of the room and then they can come back in and hopefully their computer will be going very smoothly. So those are the things you can do. Those are the most active or our most popular things that you can do when you are using your meeting room. Adobe Connect can do so much more. But for a quick little opening tutorial, I think that is good information. You can come in and you can use your room and set it up and have a productive meeting. So I hope that you have learned something today. You have a great and wonderful rest of your day.